Hello, welcome to the video for what is material instance. So materials are your basic building blocks for how things look inside the scene on top of a plain and simple text uh, mesh. So like this one down here. Every material is unique, but let's say for example, you just simply want a slight variation. I have for example, a white grid here, but I also have a blue grid right here. Now I could create two different materials. The problem is that's going to use up extra memory and it's going to require more processing power because each material has to be rendered separately. Unreal Engine has what's called material instances. Basically it is the original material, which is the only thing that's basically held in memory and such, and it's a slight variation of it based on what you want to expose. So this right here is a material and I've named it master material. And if you notice on the top, it says material grid unlit master of type material. If I go over to the blue one, you'll notice it says material instance. We'll go ahead and cover the difference. If I open up my master material, you'll notice I'm basically taking a texture sample, multiplying it by a color, and then setting it as an emissive output. That's what lets me have this little white grid that I can use without any lighting. Now I want a blue one. Actually, let's go ahead and let's make a red one. So here's what we do. We take our master, we right click, and we go to create material instance. This will go ahead and give us another material based on the original of the type material instance. We'll go ahead and name this to red, and then we'll go and open it up. You'll notice that our master allows us to edit, but the instance does not. It simply displays our different variables on the left-hand side as part of our master material. Now you'll notice over here I have parameter groups with one parameter that I can actually change. If I go in here and I change this to red for example, I can go in the color picker and change it to, let's make it a darker red. This allows me to change this instance of the master material to red. And if we go back in here into our browser, we'll notice we now have a green, a red material. We can drop it over here and once it compiles, or uh, sorry, that's because that is an actual static mesh over here. We'll change that to red. We now have a red version of our grid, or if I dropped on my BSP down here, we have red. We'll go ahead and put this one, you know, back to blue. And that's, that's it. That is a red material instance. Now material instances basically are an exposed set of parameters inside of your master material. If you look over here, you'll notice one of these is yellow and it says under it parameter and it has a value. This is a vector parameter that I'm using for a color. Let's go ahead and show how to do this. We'll go ahead and hold down three and I'll bring in a vector material, a vector node. I'll put it back in. We'll change this back to white. And you'll notice we now have white. Right now we cannot do anything. If I was to actually go back in over here, you'll notice that these ones will now break. If we go back inside of our different variants, you'll notice I no longer can change the color. I've broken it. Let's fix that. We'll go back into our master. And what we need to do is we need to expose this variable, this as a exposed parameter. So if we right click on it and convert to parameter, it now turns it into a parameter. We can go over here and name this. We'll name this as color. And we'll go ahead and change the group and we'll change the group to let's call it setup with a misspelled E and our default value is white. Now if we go back into our variants, you'll notice they changed back in color because I now have the color parameter exposed and I can go ahead and just simply adjust that as needed based on any of my instances. If you wanted other things like a texture sample to be exposed, you can convert that to a parameter. There are in our list over here, once we find parameters, there we go. Here's the different types of parameters that come by default. I took a vector and converted it into a parameter. You don't have to do that though. You could just drag in a vector parameter itself, or you could type in parameter and bring in a texture object parameter. It doesn't really matter. You can do it either way. I like to basically build my graph and then expose whatever I want exposed. For example, if you wanted your emissive color to be even brighter, we could do another multiply. Let's go ahead and do that. 
we'll bring in a constant. We'll multiply. We'll put this down here in B to make it cleaner. We'll do this into A. Pull this back out, and you'll notice our color now changes to black because my value is zero. We'll set this to a default of one. Save it out. I'll go ahead and expose that as a parameter. We'll go and name this to, let's call it emissive multiplier. And the nice thing is on parameters, you'll notice that they have different mins and maxes if you'd like to set them to mins and maxes. We'll set this to a default of one. We'll set it to zero for the minimum, and we'll set it to five for the maximum on the slider. For emissive materials, the brighter, the, um, the higher your color is past one, the more it appears like it glows. So if we now go into here, we'll go in and put blue back on the bottom. We'll open up blue. We now have emissive multiplier. If we drag this up, you'll notice it looks more like it's glowing. We'll save this and go back. And now it looks like we have a glowing lighter blue texture. And it's all because we are using a material instance with exposed parameters. And that's it. That's how you go ahead and you have basically a base material and you have slight variations of it. And you allow your level designers to easily tweak things to how they want it without having to go in and mess with our giant messy grid. All they have to mess with was what color do I want it and what multiplier do I want it. And that's it. That is a material instance. It's a great way of efficiently lowering the memory footprint and increasing the performance in your game as well as allowing you to have easily tweakable textures. Uh, sorry, easily tweakable materials. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below.